the way I learned nouns, my text and my author gave eight noun rules. I'm just going to give you the first one, and that's the only one I think you need to know right now. Most of them are they're really not rules as far as hard, fat, fast rules in Greek, but rules that help you remember the endings and things like that. So, stems ending in blank or blank are in the first declension. Anybody have a guess what these are? Probably not. Stems ending in alpha or eta. They would be your first declension nouns. If you look back at the top on the vocabulary on graphe, what does that end in? <coughs> the eta. And if you see following that is the hay the hay article, and that's you know the writing. And that's a feminine first declension noun. Stems ending in Omicron are in the second. That's what we learned two weeks ago. If you want to fill that in. So the second declension is Omicron. First declension is Alpha or Eta. And finally, third declension nouns end in consonants, consonantal stems. Uh, those are a little tricky, and I don't know. Sure, if Jeff will talk about those next week or not. He didn't say what his next step would be. I've mentioned the article a little bit the masculine, the feminine, and, and the neuter. These are all nominative singular. I don't know if y'all recall back in December I told you that. One of the words that occurs the most in the New Testament is the article. It occurs almost 20,000 times. And just like nouns, it, it has its own declension. This masculine and neuter basically follow the second declension, and the feminine follows the first declension. So basically, the endings, this doesn't have the S, but most of the other endings will follow just exactly like the nouns. The noun declensions. And because of the way the, the article is, is declined, it, the article, if you read the last line on the first page, the article always agrees with the noun and modifies in case, which is nominative, uh, genitive, dative, or accusative. It'll always follow the noun in that, so you can always connect the two in number whether it's singular or plural, and in gender, which those three here. Even though these all translate into English as the, the Greeks use the article a lot differently than, the, than English does. So generally, you can think of it as the, but not necessarily always the case. Just like when Jesus wept, there was a, a hole in front of Jesus. We usually don't say the Jesus wept. That's just the way the Greeks use the article. I mean, I, I don't have enough time to tell you how the, how the article is actually used. But just be aware that it's not necessarily used the way we think of, of the. the Greeks. In this article, when I say the article, they only have one article. It's the definite article. In English, we have an indefinite article, which is we translate, or which is a or an, like a apple or, or an apple, and as opposed to the apple. The apple being the definite apple, so that one, or a apple, is an indefinite article. They don't have that in Greek, and so uh, that's a difference that can come out in some translations. And I was going to talk about tonight, but I, I don't think we'll get there. We've only got a couple minutes here. Turn to that last page. We've got the cases on the left, nominative, genitive, dative, accusative. And if you go over the first column there with logos, that's second declen declension masculine. And that's what we learned a couple weeks ago. Uh, you got your root logo, and then the sigma ending for nominative and the upsilon for genitive, and on down the line. Uh, and then it, it's the second declension neuter at the end with ergon, that's almost the same as, as masculine except in the nominative, the neuter 
now will have a, a new ending as opposed to a sigma ending in, in the masculine. Uh, also, in the plural, the nominative and the accusative are different in, in between the neuter and the masculine, you'll notice. In birth declension nouns that we talked about, the end in alpha or eta, I've got an example of both in the singular, grafe and pora. Pora means our. Uh, grafe is writing. Grafe ends in, in eta and is declined as you see there. Ora ends in alpha and is declined in the singular as you see. But when it gets to the plural, they both decline with the same endings. So in the singular, grafe has an eta ending. In the plural, it'll have an alpha ending, except for genitive. And actually across the board, if you look at genitive, all the genitive plurals have omega nu ending. So anytime you see a noun with on at the end, you know it's genitive plural. At least if it's in the first or second declension noun. So I, I put four nouns at the bottom that uh, just for you to practice. Uh, I put the uh, the article beside it so that you would know which um, whether which gender it is, whether it's masculine, feminine, or neuter. So anyway, that's something y'all could try. I think we've learned all these words before, but if you don't know them, call. Cosmos, world, or um, universe, Doron, I that Doron, I believe that's a gift, uh, or, yeah, I think so. Agape, love, and this is the noun, not the, not, not agapo, which is a, the verb, and then cardia is the, the last one there, the heart. And if you notice, that's another thing. Cardia. In English, it'll come over as a C. So, like in cardiac or whatever. K's, capitals usually come over into English as a C. Cosmos, even the first word. It's cosmos. So, just a few tidbits there. I guess we're out of time. I've got two after there. Anybody have any questions before we adjourn?